Yeah, it's probably one of the stoneflies that we see hatching on the stream today. There's about three different sizes that we're seeing, from that larger one that I showed you first off this morning, all the way to the small guys like this. Uh, there's a variety of species of stoneflies available. Small stoneflies like this one primarily have a one-year life cycle, and they start out as small eggs that are deposited on the stream bottom. They have what is called an incomplete life cycle, which means that they hatch out of an egg and look similar to this little stonefly. We'll go through as, as in all insects, they have an exterior skeleton. They have a harder shell on the outside instead of an interior skeleton like we would have. As they grow, they have to molt this exterior skin to continue to grow. They'll molt that skin four or five times during the course of a year, grow up to this size, and probably hatch it approximately this time of year uh, next year. But some of the larger stoneflies that we have have a very similar life cycle, except it takes them up to three years to grow up big enough to emerge into a winged insect. I was mentioning about some of the large stoneflies having more than one year life cycle as their underwater form. And here I've collected three age groups of the same species of stonefly. This is one called Terranarsis. It goes by the common name of salmon fly or trout fly or fish fly, depending on where, what stream you may be fishing. These insects live for three years. Now, the hatch has already happened for this year, so we have one large one that's a two-year-old, one that's a one-year-old, and the small one would be just hatched from this year. You can imagine this large insect, and this is in the range of almost two inches long right now. By next spring, when it's time for him to hatch into a winged insect, he'll be close to three inches long. Very big insect. But here's another interesting thing about stoneflies, and this particular variety is a complete vegetarian. He has scraping mouth parts, and he scrapes algae off of the rocks. But if, I look, if we look at underneath of this stonefly, we can get an idea of why they have to live in the types of water they live in. Underneath his legs here, he has these fuzzy material. This is his gills. Those are non-muscular, and he has to have running water go across those to aerate him. So it restricts our stoneflies to pretty much fast-moving water that can aerate their gills. Another thing that we like to see interesting about these big stoneflies is that if they get rolled out from underneath a rock, they take a very interesting curved position. They don't swim very well. You can see by them walking around here in the water that they're not very agile and a little bit lethargic, so they're not very good swimmers either. Let's have one key to the type of fly we might use for an imitation. If I take this guy out of here and drop him back in the water as if he were washed out from underneath a rock, He'll take a very curled up position to help him make himself more dense and sink back to the bottom so that he can uh, get among the rocks. It's a very good element to use in stonefly nymph imitations is on a curled hook so that they look, whoops, looks like this stonefly that's just washed out from underneath a rock. And as soon as he gets to the bottom, then he'll stretch out and, and go for cover. Today we've been talking about stoneflies, and we've picked up and showed you several different varieties of stoneflies in several sizes, and both nymphs and the adults. And one, of the, and one of the things that we probably ought to look at and always of interest to folks is what kind of flies you'd use to imitate these particular stoneflies. Now, we were looking at some of the nymphs as well as some of the discarded nymphal shucks from these stoneflies when they crawl out on shore to emerge, and that's a common way for these stoneflies to emerge. But we could imitate them as underwater forms, as the nymphs. Well, I might try a stonefly that looks like this. This is a fly called a mat's fur nymph, and it's a very nice stonefly imitation for these lighter colored stoneflies. This one was kind of a tan. Now this looks really light colored. If I put this in the water and get it wet, we'll find out it takes a considerably darker shade, like that. And we've changed the color quite a bit. Now this is much more representative of the stonefly nymphs that this stonefly came from. 
So we could use that if we were going to fish underwater with a nymph. Now, what if we were going to fish with a dry fly to represent this winged guy here? Well, we have a couple different choices. This is a stone fly of my, uh, that I've devised, and it's a dry stone fly. It's kind of a copy off of several different types of stone flies that were inspired by some eastern patterns. Uh, it rides low in the water and does a very good job of imitating uh, these stone flies as they sit low in the water. These, these insects are not good swimmers. They return to the water to lay their eggs. And after they've laid their eggs, they don't have any more energy anymore, so they drift on downstream and become food for the trout. So the trout have access to these insects both as the nymphs on the bottom of the, the stream. And as we said, these are more than one year life cycle, so they would have access to them on a pretty much of a year-round basis. Then as they crawl to shore to, as nymphs to hatch into a winged insect, and then after they've hatched, they mate and go back to the water to lay eggs. And that's our next opportunity to fish for stoneflies. And we could use a fly like this. For our smaller stonefly, we could choose a smaller imitation. Uh, this is one that would be called a Schroeder's. This is a, here's our smaller stonefly. And here we have another imitation. This isn't as bushy, because this isn't as big a fly. It would be called a Schroeder's parachute stonefly. Devised, fly devised by a fellow named Ed Schroeder. And we have the same opportunities with a smaller stonefly, both as a nymph and fishing it after it comes back to lay eggs as an adult. You find stoneflies in large numbers in streams like this one where there's lots of fast roiling water with large boulders to, and turbulence to make this water well aerated. And, and with these stable rock formations, these are good habitats and good places where you're going to find stoneflies. We don't go to streams with slow, easy flows and weed beds and expect to find stoneflies. Stoneflies are pretty much relegated to these faster, well oxygenated streams where there's good, good rocks. Now the nymphal form of these large stoneflies, because they have a three-year life cycle, are very important to the angler because they're common in the stream 12 months a year. 365 days a year. So any river that has good numbers of stoneflies, of the large stoneflies, you can go out winter, summer, spring, fall, and have some quite good fishing with stonefly nymphs. One of the other insects which we'd find, I mentioned the golden stone. This is another quite large stonefly with a three-year life cycle. And this offers Another color form, the salmon fly, is quite orange underneath its body. And the golden stone is exactly what it sounds like. It's a golden color underneath uh, on the underside of the body. And both these are spring hatching stoneflies and amount to a great deal of furious activity for a relatively short time period, maybe a week to 10 days for each of these insects. Uh, then we have a lot of other time that, uh, that these are not present and the fish don't respond to them. So it's, a, it's pretty exciting when it really works well and it's a little discouraging when the fish have decided not to eat those big insects. Yeah, sometimes overlooked by the anglers are the smaller stoneflies. Here's one that would be imitated by something in the size mm. 10 or size 12 adult or nymph uh, and it amount to an awful lot of the stoneflies that may be present in a stream uh, during the summer months. Most of the smaller stoneflies have a one-year life cycle as opposed to the large ones with a three-year life cycle. So they're present and most fishable during the spring and summer months. And uh, these are commonly, you know, in some areas overlooked just because they are not the big and, and enormous stoneflies. Uh, those large stoneflies, by the way, are Im can be imitated by size four dry flies. It's a big dry fly. Here's an example of one of the smaller stoneflies. And these would be imitated by something in the range of a size 14 or 16, both nymph and dry fly. And in many streams, they're extremely common. And they do get fished a little bit as adults. They have a common name that they're called yellow sallies. 
or little yellow sallies, depending on the area. And they amount to some outstanding fishing, and sometimes for up to two months during the summer instead of a week, as in the big ones. These small stone flies also have a one week life cycle. And as with all the stone flies, pretty much, there are a few exceptions, but with pretty much all the stone flies, they're available to the trout as nymphs, and they're available to the trout as winged adults. They crawl out of the river and crawl into the vegetation and bushes and rocks along the bank and go through their emerging process there, in away from the trout, away from the birds, and under, under some form of cover. So they really aren't available to the angler as an emerger. We have the nymph and we have winged adults. One of the important elements of stoneflies, and it limit that limits where they live, uh, has to do with the type of water and their gill system. Uh, stoneflies have a gill system that requires highly oxygenated water, and as a result, we don't find stoneflies, in, as a general rule, in slow-moving uh, streams. We don't find stoneflies in lakes because there isn't enough active water, aerated water, for them and they're referred to as stoneflies and it's possible because of the stony parts of these riffle areas where they most commonly live.